What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back into another video. We've got some updates for you guys. We've got some Giants news for you guys and I'm going to cover it all right here up next. So before I get into it guys, just to let you know, I probably won't be able to go live for this Sunday's game against the Minnesota Vikings, but I will be going live Thursday night against the New England Patriots, so hope you guys join me then. Also, I have some updates as far as the uh, the podcast, the Undrafted Analyst podcast will be around shortly. Please stand by with me as I try to find time to actually start this podcast and get everything going. Also, remember to uh, make your picks on my Pick'em League. As you guys know, the first, second, third place winners get a, a reward. It's going to be a secret reward, so you guys just have to get there, okay? You guys have to get there to and win, get first, second, third place, and you will find out what your rewards are, partly because I haven't decided what they are yet. So, you just got to play along and, and get to the top. So I'll leave my Pick'em link in the description below. Go ahead and um, join that. There are, there are a lot of people that forget to make their picks. And, you know, if you join now, you may still have a chance. I don't know. You got to be good. You got to be good. So let's get into the news, guys. Welcome in as, you know, insert intro here. I don't have an intro. So boom, I'm here today talking some Giants news for you guys. First up, obviously, Saquon Barkley. Everybody's talking about Saquon Barkley right now. Is he coming back anytime soon? The answer is no, not yet. Not against Minnesota, at least. And Pat Shermer hasn't ruled him out yet, but there is no way he is going to play this week. But he is looking, it's reports are saying that he is eyeing his return week six against the New England Patriots on Thursday night. Now, that's only a few days away. From from here on, that's a week, that's a week and one day away from today as I'm recording this video. He has a lot to recover from, but you know, his his uh, his injury is a lot like when I broke my ankle. When I broke my ankle, the doctor said, "Hey, you're gonna be you're gonna be in a boot. You're gonna be in a cast. You're gonna be on crutches for about you know six to eight weeks. So you know, don't walk on it. Don't do anything like that, and and you'll recover." I said, "Screw that. I'm not. I don't have six to eight weeks. I'm, it's about to be summer vacation. I was in middle school at the end of middle school." I said, "Screw that. I'm I'm not gonna do all that. I even went hiking on a trail in my boot without crutches." And it, it, the more you exercise, what my point is, the more you exercise an injury, like an ankle or something like that, you know, not, of course, you're not like doing insane cutting in routes and things like that and, and really putting wear and tear on your ankle. If you exercise it, if you walk on it every once in a while, if you, you know, get it, get it back to normal, it's going to recover a lot quicker. And that's what Saquon Barkley is doing. Hopefully I show you guys the, the video of him, you know, doing a little cuts here and here uh, with his ankle and getting his ankle accustomed to doing that kind of movements again. You know, doctors always say not to walk on your ankle, not to walk on your foot, things like that when you break it. But to me, it, it, you recover a lot quicker. So uh, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, so I ain't going to say nothing. But I mean, from my experience, uh, that's def that definitely relates to me of what Saquon Barkley is going through right now. He's exercising it and he's going to come back even stronger. And I told you guys this a couple of weeks ago. Saquon Barkley is a fighter. He was battling injury that nobody even knew about last year. He was battling injury. That at the end of Carolina, that Carolina game where he scored that touchdown, he his 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 knee bent the other way okay when he landed his knee bent the other way and he was fine he was back the next week okay so uh, that being said you know Saquon Barkley is a fighter and I believe he will be back against the New England Patriots that's going to be a huge game for the Giants in general and I'm sure he doesn't want to miss it now I guess the question really is should Saquon Barkley be playing right because we don't know if, what, what the Giants are going to do you know yes the Giants have given us a lot of encouragement a lot of looking forward to in the next couple of weeks beating Tampa Bay beating Washington, but remember, I mean, Tampa Bay looked impressive against uh, the Rams, but the Tampa Bay wasn't really a scary team before that. They were decent, but they weren't a scary team before that. And on top of that, Washington. I mean, I said it in my video. You guys can go back in my video. I'll put the card up above. You guys can go back in the video. I was not impressed with the Giants win. The defense played great, but still wasn't impressed, okay? So, I I'm going to pump the brakes on the Giants and, and not say that they're a playoff team yet. I did say on my live show that I thought that the Giants can contend if they beat Minnesota. If they beat Minnesota, they are going to contend for a spot in the playoffs, and they may they may make the playoffs if not get eliminated right at the end of you know playoff contention and things like that. So, um, you know, I'm excited about this game. This game means a lot. So uh, we'll see what happens. But should the should the Giants activate Saquon Barkley? Should they rush him back? 
if we, you know if we if we get hot. The, the answer is yes, probably. If, if we're hot, if this if we're making a playoff push, we beat Minnesota. We come close with New England. Um, and I don't know who we play after that. I think we play the Arizona Cardinals or something like that. And we beat Arizona. Don't quote me on that. I think we play Arizona Week 8. Um, and, and we do all those things. You know, even if we lose against New England, if we play them close, then, you know, activate Saquon Barkley and let, let's, get, let's get rolling. But if we lose those games terribly, we lose against Minnesota, we lose against uh, New England, and we just barely win against Arizona, or if we lose to Arizona, don't rush Saquon back. Just let him get back to full health. Make sure he's ready for the end of this year and to next year. And we will go on from there. I want my guys to play, but I want them to be healthy at the same time for when we actually really need them. So that being said, that's the Saquon Barkley news for you guys. Quickly to know before anybody, because uh, nobody really talking about this, the Giants released CJ Conrad, the tight end out of Kentucky, who I was really excited about. They released him from the practice squad and signed on running back Austin Walters, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if that, if that name is correct. Aust Austin Walter, he was signed to the practice squad uh, a couple of weeks ago, and CJ Conrad actually a couple of weeks ago, it flew right over my head, but it happened, and he was waived from the Giants. Uh, he was, he was, um, he was terminated from the Giants practice squad. Now, as you guys know, Washington, we suffered a huge loss uh, in the injury department with Ryan Connolly, who I was really excited about. He's on the, like, the top 25 rookies of this year. He's a fifth round pick. I mean, just a fantastic pick. I can't wait till he comes back. Nobody nobody believes me when I say this, but guys, he really reminds me of Luke Keekley out there. I'm not joking with you whatsoever. The run stop, the, the blitzing from inside, uh, the pass coverage, everything, the awareness, everything you have that you have in Luke Keekley is a, a, all that is a little bit there in, in Ryan Connolly. Not, you know, full dosage, but it's there in Ryan Connolly. I really like him. But as you guys know, he was put on IR. The Giants had to replace him, and they signed on Josiah Tau Effa. And with that, the Giants also activated Golden Tate, who was suspended for four games due to PED use because the guy was just trying to have a baby. But that's neither here or there. He is now with the Giants. He will be playing against Minnesota as well. He is back, and he is healthy as well. And with those uh, moves, you know, there has to be somebody that gets booted off the team. In that case, it was two wide receivers, Benny Fowler and TJ Jones. Now, TJ Jones, I completely understand and I completely was on board for. If there's anybody to terminate here, it would be TJ Jones. You know, the second place would be Antonio Hamilton, but Antonio Hamilton is making plays on special teams and that's what we need him for. The Giants are ranked at number one in special teams and Antonio Hamilton is a huge part of that along with Cody Kaur as well. So as you guys know, that happened. Uh, Russell Shepard was put on IR as well and that's what brung on Jonathan Hilleman. Obviously, you guys know that. But um, as far as the Benny Fowler termination goes, that really caught me by surprise. Now, I know Benny Fowler hasn't been the most consistent as of late, but I figured that we, we kept some wide receivers on the roster just because we have some very in, insta, um, you know, instability there at that uh, position, being that Cody Latimer always gets hurt. The guy just came back from a concussion. You know, he's injury prone, if anything. If anything about Cody Latimer, if you could get, get one word or two words about Cody Latimer, it's injury prone, okay? This guy gets injured all the time. Doesn't matter where it is on his body. He's always hurt. So Benny Fowler should be somebody that, that comes in for that for that time. He competes with Cody Latimer for that number three spot anyway. Uh, you got Golden Tate coming back. He's fine. Uh, Sterling Shepard's coming off a concussion as well. We don't even know if he's 100%. He's off the pri he's off the um, injury report, but we, we don't even know if he's 100% right. So um, there's that. And, you know, Darius Slayton's great too, but Darius Slayton is still dealing with that hamstring issue. And you can't really shake that as a wide receiver. That takes a while to get rid of. And he's been, you know, dealing with that since the preseason. So there's a lot of wide receivers that have recent injury history that I don't, I'm not really comfortable with just letting Benny Fowler go. I thought Benny Fowler was not the most consistent of wide receivers, but he did put in the work. I didn't really, I didn't really like the way he played against Tampa Bay when I was watching on film. Ran a lot of inconsistent routes. All One of them was... Um, you know, almost intercepted by, uh, you know, Daniel Jones almost threw an interception due to the fact that Benny, Ra Benny Fowler ran a very lazy post route. Um, but that being said, it is what it is. Benny Fowler's off the squad. I'm pretty sure he's going to find a team somewhere else. But TJ Jones, TJ Jones needed to go. TJ Jones was, um, 
a decent wide receiver, but he never got reps. The Giants never really used him. I guess they didn't really have confidence in him in that aspect uh, to play in the regular season. And on special teams, dude. On special, I've been saying this since he first took a special teams rep in the preseason when he caught a punt return. Actually, when he muffed the punt return. He is averaging at least one muff every time he every every game he's in that he takes a punt return every game that he's in he's averaging at least one muff punt okay that's not good and then you don't ever want to see that you don't even want to see one month uh, a muff punt the whole season the guy had like four or five including the preseason okay he was not good he needed to go and Corey balancing should probably should be the guy there taking back the kicks if not, a guy like Cody Core, maybe somebody expendable that if they get hurt, it's not going to be a big issue. Jabril Pepper should not be the guy there, being that he might be playing inside linebacker most of the time uh, due to the fact that we don't have much inside linebackers on the field. Now, I wanted to talk about Josiah Taufa. Now, during the preseason, he was like top 10 in rookies, according to Pro Football Focus. I'm not a biggest fan about uh, Pro Football Focus, but, you know, he was the top 10 rookie for them. And uh, you know what? He was great on film. As soon as we signed him and I watched him on film, like, who is this guy out of UTSA? Uh, he jumped out the page for me. I was watching his film, and it looked like a highlight film. It was great. Uh, you know, Josiah Talafa was making plays everywhere. Um, you know, he's very uh, energetic, extremely, you know, uh, you know, jittery kind of with the legs, you know, has a lot of twitchy feet. I love that in an inside linebacker. That means they're they're ready to go in every which direction. I love a linebacker with tw twitchy feet. So, uh, that being said, there's that. And we also signed Chris Peace, um, the uh, defensive end slash inside linebacker. And I think he can play both inside and outside. Um, you know, we signed him due to the fact that Lorenzo Carter is a little beat up. And, you know, I think we signed him when Ryan Conley got put to IR as well. So, uh, he was on the Chargers practice squad as well. So, that is the injury update for you guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you guys think about this? Should we play Saquon when he's healthy? Or should we rush him back? Should we let him rest? What do you guys think? I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. With all that being said, I'm Kid Blue. I'll see you guys in the preview video for the Minnesota Vikings. Let's get it.